What have we been up to around the shop? Stay tuned. I got some updates for you. It's been a little while since I posted. I went shopping, so a few things to show you, including one bigger item and some of my big green egg lesson learned and just things that I do. All coming up in the video. Come on, let's do it. Hey there. Well, I'm back. It's been a little while since I posted a video. I found out I have an addiction to Lego. I've built a few Lego things, but that's beside the point. Um, also got some Christmas pixels in, so I've been working on getting some of the house outline done. And I got one window done, and I'm working on the PVC for the rest of it. But it's been constantly raining here. I got one nice day, and I cleaned up the grills. Um... What else has been going on? That's about it. I did go shopping the other day, and that's kind of the focus of the video. So I got a few new things. We'll go over a couple of them. I got some new business cards that came in. Get out the trusty knife. We'll just take a quick look at it. I got a little bit better quality this time. So, it's a little blurry on this camera for some reason. And then on the back, a little bit thicker material, so that should help. I'm going to start putting them in with stuff I ship out. I have another kind of a marketing thing I got. got some can koozies so I'm going to get those labeled up with my logo and we'll have those set aside to give out at barbecue events or to put in with orders as they ship out and I do have an order sitting back there I have to ship out I'm still doing a couple little tweaks with some of the printers but they're mostly up and working I did get that uh, filament PIE PEI plate that's working great so I've got to get a second one for the other printer because that glass bed is getting kind of worn down. I'm not very impressed with those, those any cubic ultra bases. Not all that impressive. Filament has really impressed me. So one of my best sellers in my little Milwaukee line of 3D prints has been these little um, hangers for the Milwaukee bit boxes for the screwdriver set and drill bits. So I've actually got, this is for an order. I have to send out six pairs of them and then get them more printed and get them on the website. I do finally have the CNC machine up. Got my laser engraver up, which I got a laser engraver video. So maybe I'll do a shop walkthrough here pretty quick. Um, this video is actually for, I went to the store and bought some grilling stuff and $400 later, I got a couple new items, and that's what the focus of this video is going to be. I got a thermometer slash controller for the big green egg and uh, a fan for it. So we're going to open that up, go through it. Maybe we'll talk about a couple things I've learned with the big green egg. Um, as some of you may or may not know, I have a green egg. I have two Traegers, and I have a Blackstone. Um, one Traeger's up north, Blackstone's up north. The big Traeger and the big green egg are both here. So, in the meantime, before we get into the little unboxing and kind of the overview of the new toys sitting over there, hiding yet, I have, we're up to 18 subscribers on the channel. When I started this, I didn't think I'd even get that far. I'm, I'm new to it. It's late in the game. But, hey, 18 of you are out there. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Trying to get up to 20. So... Please like, subscribe to the videos. I can use more subscribers. Send me questions, things you want to see. Fill out the comments. Information is good. Um, when you subscribe to the channel, try not to do it anonymously because the 20th person I'll send out a bottle of the Frag Out seasoning to. Then we'll set another goal. Without further ado, let's take a look at what we got. So, 
I am not entirely sure how long it's been out. I was just doing a little research on, you know, I had the big green egg and the egg genius, I believe it is, and I just wasn't too thrilled with the API for it. It just, it just seemed not thought through, kind of basic. The, I was having issues with the one I was running. You know, I got the probe with it, and after three uses, the probe went kaput. So I bought another probe, and after about three uses, that one didn't work. So it's probably not the probe. It's probably the device. I just overall wasn't impressed with it. So much so not impressed that I ain't even going to show it. So I was doing some research. Now, I have the Thermapen from Thermoworks. And I love it. It's a thermal pen is an instant read thermometer. The thing is perfect. So I, I do like the thermal works. They got a decent quality, better quality than Maverick. We'll find out how their big thermometer is in comparison to the Traeger I grill, which I do have that also. But let's get into opening this up. Well, let me show you the other part of it. I got the billows here too which this is going to basically replace the egg genius on the egg so it's a little fan to help control temperature it's good for long cooks i think i've kind of got it dialed in where i can cook on the egg without it but it's nice to have for the longer cooks and when i just want to be a nerd so let's get into it all right, so let's get the box open. Now, I picked this up at Kemp's Ace Hardware. I do a lot with them. I buy almost everything with them, and I, that's where I do my cooking demos. And so let's take a look. This was $229.99, which I did pay for out of pocket. Nobody is sponsoring this or paying me to talk about it. I'm just with only 18 subscribers. I'm not even on the radar. <laughs> Let's take a look at what we got. All right, so obviously we have our instructions first. And this is called the uh, Thermal Works Signals. It's the newer version. We got the optional accessories. So let's just take a look. High temperature straight penetration, waterproof needle probe. So it's got a lot of options on it. Cable extension, two and a half inch probe, 12 inch probe. So we got a lot of different things that we can go over. And I'm sure very shortly we'll be doing some videos that will actually be using it. Here's we have some colored probe markers or probe, I don't want to say labels, but We have a little great clip. This is handy so I can have one probe monitoring the pit temperature and three probes in the meat. Or if I break out the high grill, an additional four probes for meat. And so we got one generic probe. Let's take a look, see what it would actually be called in here. Yeah, it's not in the optional probe, so just generic probe from them. Two probes, three probes, and this appears to be the probe I would use for the pit. Now, isn't that handy? I like that. Usually, they just come with a couple or a bunch of these, and you use the same one. I like that it's got a small little one for that. Very handy to me. Obviously, we got a power brick. So I'm going to have to add some power out by the grills. And a USB to USB-C cable. Nothing underneath. So let's take a look at the device. The device is, seems nice, sturdy, well built. I do not have power in here. We'll see if I can run it off a of USB-C here in a minute. I'm going to cheat and go to the directions while we talk about a couple things here. 
All right, so we got the power button here. You can also switch between Celsius and Fahrenheit with a six second push. Three seconds turns it off. And the screen here, divided up into four sections. We'll use a pointer. Divided up into four sections for each probe. Very nice. Now what I gotta try and find on here is where to plug probes in. Aha! So we can plug our probes in. And of course our USB-C connector. Sorry. So that would be our power. Very nice. It's good. It's solid. It's actually one of the nicer ones I have. It's It'll sit rather nicely. On the egg, it doesn't matter as much, but on the trigger, it would be nice to have magnets. And I may go through and uh, see what I can find out or build for probe storage, you know, 3D printing. So let's see what else we have here in the directions. Apparently... This is Chef and USDA recommended. And it gives us the directions here. Give us some temperatures for beef, beef, pork, poultry, and seafood. And just some generic instructions on letting it rest. So what is included as we went through is the high temp cooking probe. The high temp air probe. So that's what this would be called is high temp air probe. The clip, power, and the temperature chart. And this right here is basically your operating instructions. And then it's got the diagram that tells you what the different numbers are going to be. I am not going to plug this in quite yet. Um, we'll make that a different video when I actually go to use it. I have about 60 more pounds of... Uh, of pork butt which I might make that up at the end of the end of May because I have they're extending my patio <coughs> we'll have to edit that out so that's the controller now we will move on to the billows not to be confused with bellows which is what I keep calling it fan for smoker cooker control Again, I just like having things automated. This is all Wi-Fi controlled or Bluetooth, which is another thing I like. The Maverick I have is just RF controlled. That's kind of eh. Um, the iGrill, I think, is just Bluetooth controlled. So you kind of lose your connection to them. So I wanted to go something Wi-Fi. We'll see if that adds into my home automation. I did cheat and I opened this earlier. Sorry. So this we got with our one page of instructions. What's included? All right, let's go through that first. So we've got the fan plug, USB-C to USB-C cable, The fan with a nice gasket, which the Egg Genius did not have this. So I really like that. That should fit on a lot nicer. have a not, lot better seal. And this just looks a lot better. And you guys can take a look at the Egg Genius. This looks like it was thought through a lot more when they built it. I mean, it's solid. It's one piece. It's, you know, totally enclosed. The Egg Genius almost looks like it was an afterthought, you know. Wasn't impressed with it. I am impressed with the egg, but just not the Egg Genius. And that, of course, is my personal opinion. And then it's got fan adapters. So this would go, there's two different sizes. I'm guessing in my case, one would be for the smaller one, for like the large egg, the larger one for the XL and 2XL. And it looks like we got a little bit of fan tape. 
Not sure how far that's going to get me. So let's take a look at the little bit closer look at the fan. Nothing else in there. And I will be cheating and reading the directions. So we have a fan plug. I'm guessing when not in use. Kind of keeps it all protected. Pull it off. We got the fan in here. We got our USB cable. Of course, the directions. I'll even show you. The directions make sure to point out that it is USB-C to USB-C. And I notice I have a glare here. I, I know I need better lighting in here. You guys could help me out. Point me towards some better lighting. I've got three monitors in front of me, and then I've got the camera on one monitor. I could, And I've got lights above me. I could use some ideas for better lighting, you know, maybe pointing down from the monitors. All right, let's look at the fan adapter a little bit closer. All right, so the fan adapter has a power cable and then the fan cable. So I'm guessing we are going to have... It's not really clear on how it works. All right. So basically what we got set up here, what they're describing is I would take my fan adapter, plug it into my controller. Then I would look on the bottom. Okay, I've got this side here that I'm holding it on would be going to the fan. So we'll get our little fan cable. And then power... And we'll just kind of pretend, but power would plug in and go to the outlet. So actually, really simple physical setup. Again, you know, everything looks to be of higher quality, well thought through, which is what I've seen from ThermalWorks. So, so far I'm impressed with this. I don't have an outlet here to mess around with it, but maybe we'll make up some of that pulled pork early and give it a shot. I have to figure out where my colors go on. Set up my colors, but overall, this is the Thermal Works Signals and Billows. All right, just a couple observations on there and just some general things that I've learned about the egg from, you know, talking to different people. I have had the opportunity to cook with one of the egg representatives. Um, so I got some good hints, tips, tricks there. Um, just to, you know, be straight, I got the egg beginning of last summer, so it's only about a year old to me. So I've only been doing stuff with the egg for about a year. Traeger and Pellet, I've been doing it for five, six years. Before that, I did have gas grill. I don't know, don't judge. I had to start somewhere. So one thing it says here is if you get the low alarm, your fuel is out. There's some people, or there's some schools of thought, and it's just basically general preference. But my theory is if I'm cooking on the egg, I fill up the charcoal. You know, I fill it up to the top of the fire pot. I, I don't mess with, okay, well, I'm, I'm cooking this time. I just need this much. No. I put it in. I fill it in. I can use it next time. And that way I don't have to worry about, oh, well, the cook took a little longer than I anticipated. And now I'm out of fuel, so i got to take the egg apart now. No, no, no. I just fill it up. You can use it next time. Go in there, you know, knock the ash out, clean it out a little bit, add fuel next time. You'll, you're going to use it. Put it in. Um, the egg is sealed. You don't have to worry about water getting at it. You'll be fine. Um, charcoal. What do I use? This is one of the things I, I learned pretty much right off. I never knew about lump charcoal until I got an egg. I, was, I did have a Weber kettle at one time, and like everybody else, I used the briquette. Then I moved to uh, gas, which I used gas, and then I moved to pellets. So charcoal wasn't something I had a lot of experience in. So I did some looking around and learned what 
lump charcoal is versus briquettes. And briquettes use a binder, so there's chemicals in there. You don't want that in your food. So I get, you know, Big Green Egg makes its own charcoal, but I like to use the Blues Hog. It's a good value between price, the amount you get, and it works very well for me. I do use Fogo. Um, lighter fluid? No, don't use lighter fluid. You, number one, you don't want that taste in your food. Lighter fluid is a petroleum product. You just don't want that in there. Two, you use lighter fluid. You do not want that soaking into the ceramic of the big green egg. That's bad. And again, you're going to get that in your food. Big green egg with the lump charcoal can be lit very easily. With Big green egg has their own little fire starters. I had one in here and it's gone. They have their own little fire starters. They're seven bucks for a box of 24. Fogo has theirs. I think it's around 10 bucks for a box of 30. They light really easily. You put it in there, you put your coal on top, let it go. It lights really easily. Um, there are some electric igniters, just like a gas grill has. There's the electric igniters you can use. I also do have one that's kind of a little torch with a fan made by Big Green Egg. That one works well. You can use your uh, charcoal chimneys. Those work well, but just don't use lighter fluid. You don't need it. I got some lessons learned on the Big Green Egg itself. Number one, at Christmas, I figured I'm in a new house. I'll have my family over for Christmas dinner. I did a ham. I did a cheesy hash browns. Cheesy hash browns was a Big Green Egg recipe. The ham was actually a Traeger recipe. Um, I did them both on, started them both on a Traeger and ended them on a big green egg. And I basically did that because mom had never had anything off a big green egg and I wanted her to try it, which to be honest, I'm glad I did that when I did. Um, big green egg, when I went to open it up in December in Wisconsin, it wouldn't open. I had the cover on it the whole time. And took the cover off. The gasket was frozen. It was frozen shut. So I had to get my little heat gun and, you know, give it a little bit of melting around the outside. Then I actually took the heat gun in and put it in the top of the egg and let everything heat up in there. And it eventually opened. So there was a lesson learned. If you live in a cold climate, it's going to freeze shut. Solution that I learned about that, paint sticks. When it comes winter... Put some paint sticks in there. It gives you, it's, it'll still stay. You won't get water in it, but it'll give it a little bit of separation to, so it doesn't freeze shut. Worked great. I was able to use it a couple more times throughout our winter, which I am not entirely sure our winter's over. We don't have snow, but. Another lesson learned is, now I don't, I don't clean my grates and everything right away. If you don't clean your grates right away and you don't use your big green egg for a week or two, it's going to mold. I went and I opened it up at one point and it was full of mold. Never had that problem like that with the Traeger. I guess the big green egg is just makes, I don't know, a, a good environment for mold. I think it was like two weeks that it took. I burned it off, scraped things off. Everything turned out fine, but just... Be aware of that. You know, give it a cleanup if you're not going to use it. Burn it off. Yesterday I went out there. I burned off both grills, cleaned them both up. I actually have some stuff to finish up on the trigger. But just be aware that can happen with your big green egg. That's about all I have for today. Um, I just I wanted to get a video out there. Got a couple new toys. I figured I'd show you guys. It is becoming barbecue seasoning. Seasoning. It is becoming barbecue season, and yes, I'm going to leave the blooper in there. <laughs> so there will be more to come. I am working on getting a video set up on cleaning a trigger pellet grill. I am working on getting with a trigger repair guy, my father, on the new trigger Summit, a big beast of a grill. Want to get an overview of that. And then I'm just going to basically be working on getting some videos out, comparing the different triggers, comparing the different eggs, you know, maybe comparing some different Weber summits and maybe comparing them against each other. So 
until then, that's all I've got for today. Again, you know, I, I really appreciate those who have subscribed. It's actually been more than what I expected. And now I'd like to keep the momentum going. You know, you guys know that I do electronics, the lighting. I got the 3D printing, the woodworking, and I've got the grilling. Ask questions. You got a question, ask it. I'll research it. I do have access to a pretty good community for all three, so I can get an answer. Focus video on it. Again, really appreciate any feedback you guys have on how I can improve. You know, I know eventually I still have to get a, another better camera, but the lighting, I could use recommendations on the lighting and basically anything you got. I had a good friend that told me just kind of relax more and have fun with it, which today it's pretty relaxed. So until next time, you guys take care. I'll see you around.